So this is what we are going to build in this mini project. Uh, we are going to build a web scraper. We can provide a hashtag and amount of posts that should be liked and our username and password. And we also provide a date for which we want the bot to be scheduled. When the time arrives, the bot is going to open a browser, go to Instagram and execute what we have said. Okay, it's 1648. The bot is, has opened the browser. It should now navigate to cats and start liking the photos. Okay, great. Now after it's finished, it should return to the start and that's it. And we can schedule those as many as we want. We could schedule something for 1748, something for 2021. And we can schedule an endless amount of tasks to be done. We are going to create this bot entirely in Python using a GUI, creating the web scraper using Selenium and also using other Python libraries and tactics that you will encounter in many other projects. While creating this project, you will learn a lot of important lessons with Python. You will learn a lot of things starting from creating GUIs, Viteki Inter, uh, web scraping using Selenium, object-oriented developing in Python and other uh, libraries and uh, tricks and tips in Python. This is going to be our development road. First of all, we are going to create a web scraper using Selenium. In this task, we are going to see how we can log into Instagram, how we can navigate to pages, like posts, and do all the other interesting stuff. After we have developed the core functionality, we are going to create the GUI that I just showed you, how uh, in order to make it easier to interact with the bot. And in the end, we are going to create a scheduler that can actually schedule the task for a certain time. So we don't only run the bot when we execute the program or click on something, but rather we give a date and the bot runs on that date. We are going to use all the best practices in programming while developing this application. I hope this project motivates you and you are now interested to start. So let's get into it. I have started a brand new project here with an empty folder called production. I'm using the Visual Studio Code Editor, but you can use whatever you'd like. I find this one to be quite elegant and work nicely. The second thing you will need is the Anaconda prompt. So just type in Anaconda and you should see a Windows here. This is of course only for Windows. If you're using Linux or Mac, you can use it over your terminal. So now just navigate to your folder. This is my folder from where I am running this project. Okay, great. Now I would like to create a new source folder. Just type in new folder and type in source. Inside the source folder, I'm going to create a script called bot.py. Great. Now, since our bot is going to scrape the web, we are going to need a web scraper. For that, a great library is the Selenium library. So let's import that one. For that, type in from Selenium import web driver. Of course, you could also just import Selenium, but since we are, we are going to use only the web driver from Selenium, you won't need that and we can save some bandwidth and memory with that. The other libraries, quite common ones we are going to import is the OS library. So this is the operating system library with which you can do some file manipulation. You can open, close folders, move some images on your desktop and files and so on. We can also see what our current directory is and so on. It's quite useful and we will need it probably throughout this tutorial. Now let's import time. You pretty much always need time and import date time as well. Great. Now it's time to think how we are going to structure our application. We could write just a bunch of functions and call those functions. We can also call another function from one function and run the code in that manner. 
but in order to create it in a more production ready way and follow some guidelines and best practices, it would be great if we would create a class for our Instagram bot, define functions for that class and call those functions accordingly to our needs. So let's do exactly that and declare a class. Let's call the class Instagram bot. After you declare a class, you can put a colon here and two, two indents and define our function inside the class. Okay, great. Let's start with the first function. In order to declare a function, you need just to type in def as definition. Every class has the init function. What does the init function do? It gets called whenever we create an object of our class. We are going to create an object of the class shortly, so you will see this in action. Now, this is like a constructor for our class. We can pass parameters to it. Since we are creating an Instagram bot, we will need to log in into Instagram. We will also need to define the amount of posts we want to like and we will also define the hashtag for which posts we are going to like. So, uh, the first variable is going to be self. The self variable represents the instance of a class. We can have multiple instances of a class. So, if we have a class car, we, have, we can have multiple cars. But the self instance is going to reference exactly this instance of that class. Let's declare the other parameters. This is going to be username, password, amount, and hashtag. Now again a colon here and two indents. Now we need to declare the variables inside our class. For that, we are going to use the self variable again. Self username is going to be equal to username. So what, we, what have we done here? When we create our class, we are passing a username. Then we are creating a class variable called username, which exactly has the valuable, which exactly has the value of that particular object. You will see this in action in a few seconds. Let's declare the other ones. Password is equal to password. Let's declare self amount is equal to amount. And let's declare self hashtag is equal to hashtag. Great. Um, what is the next step we need to do? We need to log in into our Instagram account in order to be able to like different posts. So for that, since this is going to be um, some part of the logic on its own, it's great to create a new function for that. Let's define a new function called login, in which again, we pass the self variable. So what could we do now with the self variable? If in the login we need to pass the username and password, we could use the self.username here. Username. And this is going to be exactly the username we passed in here. Why do we need this? Because if we would have a username variable here, this variable would overwrite the variable for our particular object. And if you want to have multiple objects, that wouldn't work. Even if you don't have multiple objects, in this case, it's always best practice to declare those variables with self. Okay, great. Uh, we don't need this for now. So the first step we need to do inside the login is navigate to our page. For that, we need to use the web driver from Selenium we have imported earlier. But first of all, we need to initialize it. So let's initialize a new variable called self driver is equal to web driver dot Chrome. So we are going to create 
a new Chrome instance in which our automated Python script is going to navigate through. In order to do that, we need an executable Chrome driver. Let's open Google and type in Chrome driver. You could also use Firefox or Internet Explorer. It doesn't really matter. But for now, we are going to use Chrome. And navigate to downloads. We are going to take the latest version here and just download the Chrome driver for Windows 32. If you're using Mac or Linux, of course, download the corresponding version. Now, inside of downloads, just extract the file. Let's extract it here. Open it. Copy it to your folder, which is our souls folder, and just paste it in here. So when we get back, we are having this Chrome driver.x file. When initializing the web driver, we need to reference to that location. Since it's in the source folder, we can just type in Chrome driver.x. If it was in a different folder, we would need to navigate to that folder here. Now we can actually navigate to the login page by calling the driver self driver. As you can see, we are calling the variable here and calling a function on it. The function is called get. The get function is going to navigate us to the web page we desire. In this case, it's going to be uh, HTTPS www.instagram.com accounts login. Great. Now we have specified that. If you would like to go deeper into Selenium, you can go to the official documentation and see how this works. You can just navigate to navigating and here you see the first thing you'll want to do with web driver is navigate to a link. The normal way to do is to do this is by calling the get method. So that is exactly what we are doing here. We have a lot of different functions here which you can go through depending on the needs and I will always reference to the documentation as we use different functions. Great. Now we need to create an instance of our class, which we are going to do in the following way. Just call IG is equal to Instagram bot. And now we need to pass in the parameters. Of course, the self, we are not passing the self in. This is there by default, but we are passing the other four arguments in here. It's going to be the username. For now, I'm just going to use a test username, then test password, then some amount and a hashtag that's going to be test again. One final step before we run this is to open Anaconda and install Selenium. Just type in pip install Selenium. I have already installed Selenium. So it's just going to say requirements already satisfied. But if you haven't, you should see a lot of scripts running here to install Selenium. After this is done, we can run our program by just typing in Python and the name of our program, which is bot.py. Oh, I made an error. I need to navigate to source and run it here. Okay, great. Okay, great. This opened the browser. We forgot one little thing to do, and this is actually call the login. We could do the following. We could call it inside here ig.login or another method would be to login from our init function. Since we are having a set certain of actions, we are going to call it from inside the init function. So let's call it through self login and that's it. Another thing always nice to do when doing web scraping is to use the time.sleep function. Why? Because if we need to wait for a web page to load, we need to, uh, if we are trying to access, for example, a certain class or ID or a web page before it's loaded automatically, it's going to throw an exception. So it's always nice to wait for a few seconds uh, before the web page loads and then try to execute your 
uh, algorithms on it. So let's try to run this again. What the pipe? Okay, it navigated to the login page. Now, the next step after we have opened the browser and navigated to the login page is to actually fill out the fields and click on the login button. So, how are we going to do that? Before we start, let me just replace the username uh, with the real username. Test and a password of Novel Tech Media. We are going to like two posts in cars. Great. Now, uh, after we are on the web page, we need to select a field with the web driver and click on it. Let me write it down first and explain how this works. We are going to call web driver wait with the self driver. We are going to wait 20 seconds until self dot e C presence of element located self by name username. Okay, what have I written here? First of all, we could just call the driver self dot driver and call uh, find by element. But the problem of this approach is that we need to wait for the element to be available. We could have one approach, just give a time to sleep and call it then, which would work again. But there is a more elegant way, because in this case we are waiting for five seconds and then trying to execute. But in this case, when it's present, we are constantly checking when it's present and then we are executing it, but we are giving a maximum of 20 seconds to wait. In order for this to work, we need to import a few things first. So let's import it. From Selenium Web Driver Support UI Import Web Driver Wait. Now we can copy this part from Selenium uh, web driver support import expected conditions conditions as EC oops as EC and again here instead of support it's common dot by import by okay what are those doing? First of all, we have the expected conditions, which gives us certain type of conditions. We can check for a presence of element, we can check a, for a presence of a button, for a presence of an ID, and so on. Uh, the by one defines by what we are searching. We could be searching by an ID, by a class, by X path, and this is what we are specifying here. Also, as you notice, we have by small written here and EC as well small. We could replace this and use this by, but we want to have um, those inside of our init function. So what we are going to do is declare a self that by is equal to by and a self dot ec is equal to ec. As I mentioned, we could use those directly in here or we can declare those as variables of this class and access them throughout the self variable. Both would work equally. Um, when you're developing, 
you're going to notice there are a lot of functions um, which like this one come out of nowhere and you maybe don't understand how they work or where they are coming from. In order to learn this, you always need to reference the documentation. When you go to the documentation under weights, you can see there are certain types of functions that wait um, until something is loaded and then execute on it. So as you can see, we have the web driver wait here, which uses our driver that we have initialized. It waits until a condition, presence of an element, and we are searching the element, in this case by ID, and in our case, we are searching it by name. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for the password. Let's copy this here and paste it, just change it to password. As you see, when you're going to the Instagram page and working with web scraping, you need always to uh, inspect the element and see what you can find here. For example, we have here an input class called like that, so we could maybe search it by that class. But we have also the name username. And it is much more likely that Instagram isn't going to change the name username to something else, but the name of this class is most probably going to change at some point. So it's always the best if you can navigate through this type uh, of settings instead of just going to a class or an ID. But there are some cases where you're not able to do that and you really need to just pick the ID and go by the ID. One thing you can also do is copy the XPath and go through the XPath to that location. For example, if you copy the XPath of this, it is going to be something like that. And this would work exactly as it is, but as you can see, it is quite ugly. And if Instagram changes something in their divs and um, other HTML tags, it's not going to work anymore. So the next one is the login button. The login button, when you go to it and click on the inspect element, doesn't have anything interesting we could use. We just have the uh, type submit. We can see it's a button. There is a class, we could go over the class, but as I have mentioned, there are, in most cases, better solutions. So, let's copy it again. Um, we are not going to wait for the presence of the element. We are going to check if the element is clickable. I mean, the presence would most likely work, but it doesn't mean that the button as loaded is automatically clickable. So, we are going to go with element to be clickable. Now, we are going to search by XPath. As you can see, there is a search by ID, by name, and by XPath. Okay, what do we know about the login button? We know that it contains the text login. So, a way to write this is by slash slash star contains text. Now we specify the text that it contains and this is log in. We close the bracket, we close the other bracket and that should be it. So now it should be searching for the login button, wait for it to be clickable, wait a maximum of 20 seconds and then execute on that. So, what have I just done with XPath? If you go to the official documentation, you can see the type of things I have used here. You can maybe um, use a ceiling. If you open the ceiling, you can see how it looks like. So, depending on what you are going to be using, there is an official documentation for XPath here. I'm also not an expert in that, but this is something quite common when you are searching. For example, you could have also specified the type of which you are searching here. Instead of the star, you could have specified I'm searching only for buttons that contain the word login. After we have found those elements, it's time to execute on them. So in order to do that, we are going to access our driver through the self variable and we are going to find element 
by name. We are going to specify the username for which we are searching. After we have found the element, we can uh, call the function send keys. Send keys, which is going to pass the parameters we would like to the element we just found to be username. So we are going to pass the self dot username here. We can also do the same for the password self driver find element by name. Now we're going to go for the password. We're going to click on send keys and we're going to pass the self dot password. Great. After we have done that, it is time to log in. Now we are going to call again self. Oh, uh, this is red here because I'm using web driver with the small w. It should be like that. And one more thing is I'm calling self the small web driver. So we need to do the same here. Self dot web driver is equal web driver like that. Now we are accessing that web driver, but we could also remove the self and just access this web driver as we have done with the EC and by variables as well. So uh, now we are accessing the driver again and we are finding our element element by XPath. We are going to copy the same XPath here. After we have found the element, it is time to click on it. Now we can just type in click and we are going to click uh, on the element uh, or the button login. Okay, it's time to test this now. Let's open Anaconda again, type in Python. Should navigate to the login page now. Now let's recap again. We are waiting for the driver of the presence of certain elements or for the elements to be clickable. When this is the case, we are going to find the element, send the keys, so input the username and password and click the login button. So one more problem we have there is that we are declaring the self by EC and web drivers after we are calling self.login. So this means that those wouldn't be available inside the login function. Quick way to fix this is just to reverse the order here and place that piece of code here. Now, if we go back and execute pythonbot.py, it is going to open the page, navigate to the login, input the user data, and log into our account. Yeah, we had success with this one. Okay, the next part would be to navigate to our page where we are going to search for the tags and then start liking the posts there. So uh, for this, we are going to create a new function here. We are going to define the function as explore hashtags pass again the self variable and the hashtag. Great. After we have logged in, also one thing to consider is again to take a little break because sometimes it could take a few seconds for the page to load before we are going to execute any further. After we have logged in, waited for five seconds, we are going to hit the explore hashtags function. And we are going to pass as a parameter the self dot hashtag. Great. Now this hashtag is going to be available down here. Um, as you can see, I have written this in two ways. I have passed the self hashtag to the explore hashtag here. For example, in the login, we haven't used that. 
we have just used the self username and self password. It is generally a better approach to pass the parameter down to the function. But since we haven't done this in the login one, I'm also going to leave this blank here. Now the same principle again, type in self driver. Now the function is get and we are going to navigate to HTTPS slash slash www instagram.com slash explore slash tags slash and then we are going to add the tag that we want to explore that is going to be our self dot hashtag great this should now navigate us to the explore hashtag section we can again run this to see if it's going to work okay i forgot to write the colon here now this should work let's try again Great, the browser opens, need some time to initialize, we log in, we wait a few seconds now, and we get redirected to the car tags. Great! Now, well, we could start liking the posts. Let's define a new function here, which we are going to call like posts. Again, self. Okay, so what are we going to do in this step? We are we need to find the element in which the card is and then we need to click on it. So when we open Instagram here, we see those cards. Okay, now we can click on inspect element. We need to click again. And now this is our card. So inside of this card, as you can see, uh, there is nothing really specifically for which we could search for. There is a class of this div, then there is this image here. So it seems like we are going to need to use a class for that. But as you can see, all those images have the class of V1NH3. And if we continue, we always see those ones. So when we click on that class, the image should open for us. So click, it opens. Then when it opens, we need to click like and click the next one here. So first, let's open it. For that, we are going again to call self the driver dot find element by name by class. by class name and the class is v1 n age 3 and then we are going to click on it just like we have done with the login button nothing different here now what we have to do is loop through the amount of times we want to like an image click on the like button and click the next button so for that, we could create a variable called i and set it to 1. Now we need to loop through the elements. So while i is smaller or equal to our self.amount colon, we are going, uh, we again need to wait for the element to be loaded. We could again use the web driver wait and do the same principle or we could just use the time.sleep. Since it pretty much in 99.9% of cases opens right now, we will need to sleep for one second or we could maybe do it for two seconds in order to just look at it, how it likes the images. Um, now we need again the driver to find our element that likes so if you go to the like one and inspect on it, again, uh, we see there is a class. This is an SVG here. Uh, we see it has a class height. There is nothing really too particular about it. Okay, it is inside a button which has this class. So that's something we could be using for identifying 
the little heart. Or we could go maybe even a bit further and use the entire span to click on that. So let's do that. Again, find element by class name. Then our class name is fr66n. And we are going to again click on it. Great. Now we just need to click on the arrow to move to the right. Now again, self driver find element by class name. Now we just need the class name of the arrow and then we're going to again click on it. Let's go to the arrow, click inspect element. And as we can see, there is a class of core uh, sprite right page navigation arrow. Great. Let's copy that. That's something easy to remember. We again click on it and we need to uh, increment our eye now since we have light one image. So we are going to do this for the uh, amount of images we would like to like. <laughs> Now, after we have finished that, we could maybe remove uh, or go back from our side to the main Instagram website. So that's going to be https slash slash www.instagram.com. Now we could test this out. Also keep in mind that since I just created this account for this purpose, Instagram could be detecting that this is a bot and blocking access, but let's see what's going to happen. Okay, it logged in successfully. Now we should navigate to the cars tag. Great, now we should open it and like the one. Okay, Instagram detected that um, it's a bot and that we shouldn't keep too much activity on it. But as you can see, uh, we started the browser, we logged in successfully, navigated to the tags, liked the tags, and navigated back. At this point, we could also close the browser down. Okay, so far we have created uh, our web scraper, we are on the Instagram page, we navigate to our tags, we like the tags, and we go back. So the next thing is to actually create the user interface, the graphical user interface for our application where we will be able to provide a username, password, the amount and hashtags and also the time at which we want to schedule our scraper. Okay, let's create a new class for that. We are going to call the class main application. We could call this something like uh, graphical user interface or GUI and then have a main application from which we can start and run it. But since we are going to keep our application only at this scale, it's fine to create the main application right now. There is also a skeleton which you should use for creating graphical user interfaces in Python. We are going to use the uh, takeinter library. So let's start with that. We're going to provide the TK frame as a parameter and again we are going to define the init function here. We are again going to have the, have the self variable and a master variable. I will explain shortly what all of this means and why we are doing it in that way. Now we are going to again declare a self master variable which is equal to master we are going to run the tk frame in it self self master okay great so what does this mean actually so what we have done here is we are passing a tk frame which will be the root frame and on that we have the init function we explained earlier that that function is going to be initialized as soon as we create an object of our class after that we are calling the init function on that tk frame 
that we have just passed to initialize that frame. And it is always, as we have mentioned earlier, a good idea to keep those variables private to that instance of the object. Because if we have multiple frames outside somewhere, then we want to reference the exact frame of the object we are interested in. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's comment this out. And when starting the application, we are going to check if the name is equal to the main application. What does this mean actually? When we go and execute our program, we type in python bot.py. And since we are running the bot.py, Python is going to assign the main the name to that script to be the main name. So this means if we have multiple scripts like bot helper.py, but we still run the bot, then the bot is going to be the main one and the bot helper is not going to be the main one. So this is um, important when we are importing other modules from other files. But it is always a good idea to have it in there. So uh, the first thing we need to do is create a root. And the root is going to be tk dot tk. And we also need to import the tk library at the beginning. So we are going to import the library as import tk inter as tk. Um, now we can set a title, for example, root title, it's going to be ig bot. And now we need to create our main application. So it's going to be main app and we are going to initialize our main application with the root. So this is what I was referring to. We are passing the root frame. You need to have a root frame to the main application, which is right here. Then uh, we are taking that frame to be the master frame or parent name, depends how you want to name it, inside of that one class object. And we are initializing the frame with this object that we passed here from the root. Okay. And after we have done that, we can type in root dot main loop, which is going uh, to run the program. So what have I used here? I'm using the TK inter Python interface library. So as you can see, this is a graphic visualization library used with Python that's used quite often uh, for these purposes. Um, so as you can see in the documentation, uh, this is how we import a library and this is a basic program that starts it. You always need to create a root. Then you need to initialize an application. I mean, we use the class in this case, but you don't have to use a class. And then we need to run app.main loop. And as we have also done here, this is the skeleton that you should be using for creating GUIs in Python. Let's return back. Now there are two functions that we should define for creating every GUI. This is the uh, define configure GUI. I mean, we could also write this inside the init function, but that wouldn't be following best practices. And we will need a define create widgets function. So what does each of them do? The create widgets function is going to create all the types of widgets we need. This is, these are going to be buttons, labels, text inputs, text outputs, and everything we can see on the frame. And the GUI configuration is going to be the main stuff, like configuring the name of the application, configuring window sizes, and thing like, things like that. So we are going to configure self master, we are going to configure the geometry to be 1000 pixels times 700 pixels. 
and you can always refer back to the documentation and check what functions you can use. So let's go to the fun stuff. Now we are going to uh, create a button called the schedule button, which when clicked is going to schedule an activity. So let's call it schedule run. Now we are going to use tk dot button. Now we have to provide certain parameters. First of all, we need to provide the frame which we are referring to. So in this case, this is the self dot master frame. We could have also created a new frame and not the master frame. So we could have had uh, one large master frame and multiple frames within to which we assign those widgets. But since our application is not too complex, we are going to use only one frame. Now we can specify a text, which is going to be schedule. We can specify a font. Um, we are going to go with, let's say, 18 pixels. We can specify a pad X uh, of 10 and we can specify a pad Y of 5. We can specify uh, our main color, which is going to be white in this case. And we can specify a background color, which is going to be, I find this color to be really nice, E8. And we can specify a command. The command is going to be executed when clicking on the button. So let's specify a command. We are going to call it self.runbot. We are going to create this function in a bit, which is going to execute code when clicked. Now we need to somehow, we define the button, but we need to attach it somehow to our frame. For that, we could use pack or we could use grid. So we could just do this and this would appear on our frame. Or a better approach is to use grid. With grid, we can specify the column and row in which we would like the widget to be placed. So we could specify a column of zero and a row of five, since we are going to have five rows and we could specify a margin on the x axis of 10 and a margin of on the y uh, axis of 30. So right now, because this is the only widget we have, it's going to be in row five. But if we create a new widget in, let's say, row four, then the new widget in row four is going to come first and then the widget in uh, row five is going to come afterwards. OK. Uh, let's create our run function. So define run bot. We're going again to pass self. And for now, we are just going to print button clicked. Of course, there is going to come the real functionality. But just in order to test this out, we are going to run it like that. When you are back to the documentation, you can always search for the widgets you would like. For example, if you go to the packer options, this is the packer I have already mentioned. You could specify, for example, an X and Y value. You could specify anchors. For example, you want it to be on the left, right, top or bottom side. So if you want to change something or not really follow um, exactly along as I'm coding it, always search for what you need. So uh, if you want to search for a button, you could type in just a button and go, for example, to the take inter library button box and see what uh, parameters you can use with it. So we can test our application now. We have disabled the web scraper. We have just the window now. Great. Here is our little window. We forgot one thing to do. We need to actually run those widget commands. So let's get back there and define widgets as self 
create widgets and self.qui is equal to self.configure GUI. Great. Let's run it again. And as you can see, now we have the schedule button. When clicked, it says button clicked and the size is also according to the geometry we have specified. Let's continue creating the widgets we need. So as of now, we have the button. The first thing we will need to specify is the username. So we are going to define a label for that and we are going to define an uh, entry point for that. So let's type in username label is equal to take key label. So now we can specify the parameters again. First of all, we are going to pass in the frame, which is self.master. Then we are going to pass the text of username. Then we are going to pass a font. We are going to use the same font again and give it a size of 18. Now, since we have defined it, we need again to uh, give it a position, which for we are going to use grid. We can specify a column again. It's going to be the first column and the row is also going to be zero. We can also specify margins again we are going to specify on the x-axis 10 and on the epsilon axis a 30. Let's run our program again to see how it looks like. Let's close the old one and rerun. As you can see now, we have a username here. The next thing is an entry point. For that, we are going to use username entry is equal tk entry. Again, pass a frame, which is going to be the master. Now we can also specify the width. I'm going to go with 15 and again, specify a font. Let's use everywhere the same font. Great. Now we need again to pass it to the grid. Type in grid. That's going to be in our first column. So after the label, the row is still going to be zero and our pad X is going to be 10 and pad Y is going to be 10. Let's see how this looks like now. Great. We have a username and an area to type in the username and we can click schedule. Now we just need to repeat this for the other ones as well. So for the password, I'm just going to copy this over, change this to password, since the functionality stays pretty much the same. And we are going to change the row to be a one, and here a one. And also one thing we would like for the password is to not be able to see what the user is typing in. So type in show is equal to star. So now we shouldn't be able to see what the password is. Okay, I forgot to add a colon here. Now let's go back. Great. As you can see, we can't see anything here, but the username is. Just need to change the text here to password. Okay, let's repeat the same thing for the other ones as well.
Okay, great. This is what our product looks so far. We have a username, password, an amount, and a hashtag. So as you're probably thinking, a best approach would be to check what the user is typing in. We could check the amount that this is a number. If the password meets certain criteria as the username and the date, of course, we could add a date picker here. But this is going to complicate things a lot. It's not complex to implement those checkings, but it's going to extend our code a lot and make this project much more complex. And you're not going to learn too much doing that. So we are just going to assume that the user knows already what to type in. For example, for the date, it's going to be required that the user types in a date in exactly this type of format. One more thing we need to do here is to actually return those values. Why? Because when the user types in a hashtag and an amount uh, username, we need uh, some type of access to that. So we are going to return that. We are going to return amount entry. We are going to return hashtag entry. We are going to return date entry, username entry, and password entry. Later on, if you want to access those, we can just initialize the create widgets. And as we have done here, the widgets are going to contain all those values now. And in order to access them, we need to call a get function on each and every one inside the widget, which we are going to create shortly. Okay, so far so good. We have created our scraper that works already. We have created our GUI for running it. Now it's time to create a scheduler. So in order to do that, we are going to create a list of objects that is going to contain the objects that we are going to schedule. So the scheduling events. So let's do that. First of all, we are going to create a list. We are going to create a list of schedule objects, which is equal to an empty list. So how are we going to create the objects? We can just have, for example, some JSON objects inside this list, or we could create a new class that consists of those objects. Let's go with the later one and create a class. We can call this class schedule objects. So, um, okay, there is a big S. So first of all, let's define an init function where we are going to define again the self value and now we are going to pass the parameters that we are going to need. So let's take username, password, we are going to need the amount, hashtag, date and we are going to have a label. So what is the label going to represent? Um, let me start the GUI to show you what I mean by that and we can run our GUI again. Type in python.pot.py and here we see our GUI. So every time we schedule an event we would like something to appear here that tells us okay at this and this time the event is scheduled and when the event finishes the text should be removed. So for that we are passing in the label here. It will make a lot more sense uh, when we first define or first create an object. So what we need to do now is get the variables. One thing that um, we need to add is the get variable because uh, as we remember when we are passing the username here we are passing the values from the entry and in order to access those values we need to call get on them. So we could also call get here and not in the other class, but uh, I'm going to do it here. Now for the password, we're going to do the same thing. Let's do the save for the amount. Call get on it. Let's do the same for hashtag. Call 
get on it. Let's do the same for date is equal to date get. Um, and let's do the same for label. For label, we won't be calling get because we will be passing the actual label here. This will, as I already mentioned, make a lot more sense when we actually create the scheduled object. And it would be also nice to have a timestamp if we need a timestamp to uh, compare times using that. We can convert our date that we have in a string format to a timestamp. In order to do that, there is a neat trick or function that you need to call. Uh, you can do it in a different approach, but this is the approach I do in most cases. Strip time call self the date. And now we need to specify how the input time is going to look like. So we have a year. So remember our format from here. Let me scroll to that. This is our format. So we need to specify that this is the type of format we are passing in here that we are going to convert to a timestamp. So now we have a year, we have a month, we have a day, then we have a uh, spacing here and then we're going to have the hour uh, colon and we're going to have the minutes and one more thing we need to call on that is time tuple um, this is this is a one-liner I use in most cases to convert a date to a timestamp and you pretty much remember it by heart after using it the multiple times. You can also dig deeper into the documentation to see how date time and time works, but you can also just take it as it is here. Now we are going to need one more library in order to schedule our events. So when we pass a new event, we want to schedule it to be executed at a certain date. So in order to do that, we are going to import another library uh, called App Scheduler. So we will also need to install that one. Schedulers dot background import background scheduler. So we want to import the background scheduler from the app scheduler module. You will need to install that one by typing it pip uh, install app scheduler. <clears throat> I have already installed it, so it's going to say requirement already satisfied. But if you haven't, you are going to need to install it. So after we have the background scheduler, we can return back to our run bot function and actually instead of just printing this one, actually uh, using the data to create the scheduling event. So let us start first. First, we need to extract the amount, the hashtag, the date, username, password from self.widgets. So we have this private variable here, self widgets, which in return gets all this data here. So what we are doing right now is just accessing those widgets from the current object that is created. And this is a, a way you can do this in Python by just unpacking the values inside of widgets. Now we need to create a label. So we are going to call this results label is equal to TK label as we have done earlier. We are going to pass the frame, which is going to be the master frame. We can also pass variables like anchor. We want it to be east and we want it to be justify is equal to TK left. So those are some uh, parameters you can look up in the documentation. 
uh, we want the text to be the following so we could write whatever we would like but I'm gonna write something like this where we are just going to specify what we have scheduled so now let us call hashtag dot get let's add some break here and write the amount amount get write the date date.get and we would also like to specify the font which will be the same font as we have used earlier but we could uh, make the font size a bit smaller let's say 13 all right we have created the label now we just need to add it to the grid as we have done earlier nothing new so let's call grid we are going to be in column number zero and now the row needs to be dynamically calculated because every time when we add a new scheduling object we don't want to put it in the same spot we want it to be in a new row so in order to do that we're going to call the length function on the schedule objects so in this way we can see how long the list is and add some spacing to this let's say six because we have already five objects here and we want the results to be after those five objects so uh, we are going to start by six and as the scheduling object list increases it's going to go up and up uh, we can just add um, uh, some margins here I found that this one looks quite okay since we have added the labels we need to actually schedule the event so we are going to create a schedule object which is going to equal to schedule object uh, let me just see how we call the class it would be better to call it just schedule object because it contains because it is one object and not a list of objects we are going to pass the username the password the amount the hash tag the date and the results label so this is the label I was referring to earlier we are going to create the label here and pass the results label here which is going to be our label here I hope now um, it makes sense why I use that one and we also need to add uh, the object to our list so schedule objects append our schedule object okay great now it is in the list one more thing that we need to do is to create a uh, we need to create now the job to schedule the event so in order to do that uh, we have imported the library earlier here as background scheduler but one more thing we need to do is to initialize and start it so we can initialize it like that background scheduler and then we need to start it sketch dot start you can uh, look more deeply in the documentation of app scheduler if you would like so you can always uh, you can also specify a scheduling event that should happen once daily every minute or you can go wild on that one but for now we just need to schedule an event to be executed once at a certain time so since we have the sketch object right now we can add a job to it um, one thing that we need to take into consideration is we need to pass the job that's going to be executed for that we are going to create a new function here 
that is going to be start bot. And it is again going to have the self argument, the username, password, amount, and hashtag. So what we need to do now is to pass this job to the scheduling object. So we are going to start the bot here. I forgot to add self. But as you can see, there is one problem. When we call it like this, uh, we can't pass the arguments to it. And if we call it like this, that, uh, that would cause the start bot to be just executed right away um, and not wait for the scheduling object to start the execution. So what we can do there is we can use a lambda function like that and pass the variables through that lambda function down to the start bot function. So here we will have the username, password, amount, and the hashtag. Okay, now we need to pass some other values like the date, which specifies that our job is going to be created on a certain date. And there is one more argument we need to specify, and this is the next runtime, which is going to be our date. Don't forget to call get on it. And we will need to add this here. Because the app schedule requires seconds to be uh, added as well. And here in our format, we are not adding seconds. We could resolve this by requiring this type of format. But since we are not doing this, we are just by default going to add those milliseconds, uh, those uh, seconds here. So we can only specify it at a certain minute and the seconds are always going to be at zero, zero. I mean, you could change this up as you would like. And let's print one more statement. Um, so we know that everything went well. Um, just schedule bot, something like that. So the next thing is to finish our start bot and then our project should be actually finished. So let's write a print statement never hurts right bot started and now we just need to start the bot in order to start it we can let's copy this line we could do this um, in a better way we could maybe just initialize the object here and then call ig start ig login ig so on on it but since it's um, always the same procedure we're just going to initialize it like that. So what we need to pass here uh, is our username, password, amount and hashtag. Uh, there is one more thing we need to consider. This is fi uh, finding the current object that we want to pass this to and we need to remove the label from the GUI when it's initialized. So how can we find the actual current object that we want to pass here? We could do something like this. Um, I will explain what I'm doing here. Here I'm just getting the current time uh, and nothing else. Now I want to have a current object which is equal to none. After that, I want to loop through our objects, through our schedule objects, and now I want to check if the timestamp of the currently looped object is equal to the current time. If it is, I'm going to set the current object to the object from the loop. So once again, we are looping through all our objects from the list and we are looking if the time step is the actual time right now where we need to start a bot. Because remember, the bot is being started only at the exact time passed to the scheduler here. 
then we are going to set the current object to that exact object and now we have since we have access to the current object we are going to uh, access the label from it and we are going to destroy it so now we are destroying the label that is being currently executed so uh, we, we are clearing the list from it you will see this in a few seconds in action and we can also uh, now remove the object from the list. Uh, actually, when removing the object from the list, the label doesn't exist in the list anymore, but it is not being destroyed still. It would still be persistent there because it is attached to the frame. So the garbage collector wouldn't uh, dispose of it. One more thing is we need to pass the variables now. We are going to use the current object, since this is the object we want to use in this object creation. We will use the password. Uh, we will use the current object amount. And we will use the hashtag. Current object hashtag. Okay, let's see if this is going to run. Okay, it started up successfully. Now, let's type in a username here. You can use uh, your password right now. Let's say we want to like five photos in the category of dogs and we want this to be the 4th of September let's say at 1326 now we schedule it okay we made a mistake here that we need to correct but as you can see we added the schedule and it is right now we can see it right now here and after it is executed it should be removed from there we just need to fix this one liner up here okay this is trapped time we are missing a t there okay now it's time to start our application let's type in the credentials again You can use your Instagram account for this one. I hope I typed in my password correctly. And let's type in the date. It's 1330. Okay. The bot is scheduled. Okay, we need to wait for a few seconds here and then see if the bot is going to start up. Now our bot should be started. Great, it starts up. Now it should be redirected to the login page. Have a successful login. Great. Okay, those are the docs images. This seems still to be a small error. In the line 65, we're comparing an integer to a string. Let's see what we are doing there. Okay, since it says we are comparing it to a string, we probably need to wrap this into an integer here. Let's see if this is going to work now. Okay, now we hit it exactly with the timing, we didn't need to wait. Okay, so far so good, let's see if it's going to work now. Yes, it seems to be working. Great. 
Okay, those images were really adorable. Now we should return back to the start and the browser. We could also close the browser down at the end. We could implement that one. Let's quickly do that. So in order to do that, we will have again a time sleep three, th sleep for three seconds, and we will call the driver to quit. Okay, great. You came to the end and our application seems to be working quite fine. We could also add multiple schedules here, like one for 1335 again for dogs. We could add one for cats at 1336 and you could add those and as long as the program is running, they should be executed uh, consecutively in their time. And as well, as far as when we execute the one statement, the statement disappears from here. So this seems to be working fine as well. And this brings us to the end of our mini project. I hope you really enjoyed this one and you had a lot of fun through the way. Of course, um, if there are any problems, just write in the comments or even personally email me. I will try to help you with every problem I can. So take a little break, uh, go through the material once again, and I'll see you in the next project. Let's, let's see again what we have covered here. We have covered web scraping using Selenium. We have learned a lot of the basic things and even intermediate to advanced things. So you should be quite familiar. Uh, if, you, if you need to extend the functionality, add something new, you can always refer to the documentation, but you should be pretty familiar with the basics, so you should be covered here. We have done a lot of object-oriented programming. We have defined functions, classes, initialized instances of those classes. So you should have also a feeling for object orientation in Python. We have done GUI programming using the TK interlibrary, which is one of the most popular GUI libraries for Python, and it is widely used for many Python applications. You should have now a basic understanding of how to program uh, how to create GUIs in Python. Of course, there is a lot more to go deeper into here, but that would be an entirely new topic. We have done other Python modules and principles as well. We have used the app scheduler to schedule events in Python, which is also extremely useful when developing scripts using Python. We have used the time, daytime library and some other libraries. And we have also uh, learned some basic things how to do in Python, like iterating through lists, uh, comparing objects, uh, initializing objects, uh, creating classes and so on. I hope you found this interesting and you learned a lot on the way. So take a quick break now and see you in the next section.